Alright, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh and this is the Arduino Folding Lab 3.0. So, 2.0 came out like a year ago and it was very popular. In fact, I had tons of them. Nice. And I also started selling them on Etsy. I learned a lot about home manufacturing. Uh, that is no lie. In other words, it was me waking up in the morning, assembling things, and I felt like that guy that put chip clips together. So I had to come up with another product that was just easier to assemble, had less parts, and was a little bit more functional. Okay, so because another thing is I had it inside a classroom and then once in a while I would have students just dive into it, have fun, but I could imagine being an instructor teaching microcontrollers and having um, labs. So a lab can fit now in an Altoid case. Let's say I had the blinking LED lab. Well I can have an LED and well a resistor and a couple wires in this case and then I can hand those out. Now how would I carry that around? Very easy. I have this nice little shuttle and the shuttle holds your the Altoid case and I can go like this. Put my fingers here, finger here, lift up, and there is my case filled with all my nifty components that I need for that day. Now there's a piece of elastic, so you'll need some elastic. This can be found in any like Hobby Lobby, Joanne's Fabric, whatever. It's it's uh, it's about the size of a 1.75 filament. So just look for that size. It's pretty standard. So this goes around and I can also remove this if I wanted to. So that way, let's say later on, I wanted to make this a project box. And let's say also, maybe I want to attach it to something. Well, I have this. Or you can put a rubber band and you could attach it to things. Like your wrist. I don't know. But you could attach it to things. With no screws. So there's not one screw in this thing keeping the cost down. Here's a PLA spike. This is now using the 1.75 filament instead of the 3, point, uh, 3 millimeter filament. Making it a lot lighter, a lot smaller. Here I have my breadboard, microcontroller, and I have wire management. Look at that. So that way when you're folding up your unit, all your experiment stays true. You got all these little nifty things. It's parametric and it's designed in the fact that I had a lot of people say well you should make it a little bit taller. Oh just a little bit taller and then you could make it taller and everybody would say well just a little bit more taller. Well this time you just print out some of these tracks and how many you print out makes it taller. So you can have one six foot tall if you wanted to. It'd be weird to fold but there it goes. And not to mention test on because this would be like six foot or at least four foot away. Pretty interesting. All right, pretty nice. Um, and you know when you get done, you just fold that bad boy up and stick your little spike in there. Now these things aren't meant to be too flexible because if it is flexible, you know, going back and forth could move your components around. So these are very stiff in their design, and they're meant to be stiff in their design. Um, you can see things that I meant to be loose in the design, because when you open it, like this clicks a little bit. This very kind of flexible with the two, but this one you can fold up, fold down, and it has a little bit of a click to it. All right, so it's time to go. Time to pack up my microcontroller. Time to pack up my Altoids. Time to put my little sled back in there. I'm putting the sled on. I just gotta keep the sled on and just slide the Altoids out. There we go. Throw it in my briefcase, ready to rock and roll. Little hint. If you're going to make some of these or make a lot of these, you need one of these. This is a double-sided pin vise. 
with taper size bits. The bits are 1 16th on this end and uh, 3 millimeters on this end. And you can go all the way just about through one of these tracks to clean out the filament track. Okay. Also, the microcontroller is held in place by 3 millimeter PLA rivets now instead of screws because I didn't want to use any screws. Sick of screws. So you can see the PLA rivets right there. If you're unfamiliar with PLA rivets, well, when you go to Thingiverse and you look for the Arduino Lab version 3, you'll find a link in there on how to make PLA spikes and PLA rivets. So, I hope you enjoy your new mobile lab. I hope instructors can use it because I love the idea of having those labs mobile and if you are an instructor using this in a classroom kind of throw a little comment in there every once in a while on how you like it and what you think of it. Alright, so enjoy.